The first point is to acknowledge it's it's part business's responsibility to start tackling, right? It's not up to governments. Uh, they certainly have a role to play. It's not up to individuals. We often sort of put the blame on individuals like, oh, you should change what car you drive or something like this. That's going to make a difference, but it's small compared to the impact that governments and businesses can have. We've had employees that have lived through already climate-driven disasters, whether they be bushfires in Sydney, freezing in Texas or California or the Philippines. And as a leader of a business, you know, part of my job is to keep those employees safe. I think the important thing for people to understand is that the next decade makes all the difference. The urgency has never been more acute. We talk a lot about net zero by 2050, it's the total amount of emissions between now and 2050 that make a difference. We can't in 2049 decide to change our minds about this. So back in February, Texas experienced a week of snowstorms. It first hit us in the middle of the night. In the morning, the apartment was below freezing. Um, we had no internet, no power. I thought it was going to go back on in a few hours, but it actually took a week and a half for the power to come back on, and we were completely freezing in the first day. To compound the disaster, COVID was really bad at the time, and my partner and I were really afraid of catching the virus, which prevented us from seeking help at a communal warming shelter or through one of our friends who may have had power. I really didn't think we were gonna make it through the snowstorm. It was actually terrifying, you know, and then the power went out. Um, from where I'm staying, I can see trees swaying and some of them, a couple of them actually got uprooted. Just need to look at my family, but I'm also the site lead for Manila, where I will do everything to actually message them. It's quite scary if no one replies to you, right? My parents had lived in their home, my childhood home, for nearly 40 years at that point. They were evacuated from the house. The next day, I called my mom um, to check in on, on how they were feeling and doing. As soon as I heard her voice, like, I just knew. And, you know, through tears, she told me that the house was completely gone. There were, you know, bushfires everywhere. The fire front just arrived and it was, it was intense. Basically, like, on the other side of the road to us was just on fire. Uh, all tr the trees were all engulfed, the fences were on fire, everything was just burning. And there was, there was nothing we could do but just sit in the truck and just wait for it to calm down. And then once it calmed down, kind of jump out, put out the spot fires and, yeah, the, like, there wasn't much else we could do. Certainly it was kind of weather we haven't seen for a very long time and um, it was driving some pretty extreme fire behaviours. It didn't feel real in that moment. Felt really sad for the memories I had there. You know, you think of like all the random diaries and photos and yearbooks and those like irreplaceable items. It almost feels like a loss of identity. Out of um, 280 people, we were able to contact 270. Atlassian wants everyone accounted for. So what we did was we sent out everything they need. We sent everything. So anything that we can actually give the employee in terms of support, you know, Atlassian, you know, went all out. Atlassian was the one that helped us out of the situation. I was very close to giving up hope and they'd found an Airbnb five minutes away. They booked it for, for us and we were able to get there and there was heat and running water. It was the most intense relief I've ever experienced. The company saved our life. I think my message to other business leaders is, you know, heed the call. We're used to it, but we shouldn't be used to it, you know, because it's different now. 
It's more of your social responsibility. Everyone does need to come together, businesses, governments, everyone to create like real systemic change. You are in a unique position to really think about what you can do as a company to protect your employees. I think the last thing for business leaders and industries to acknowledge is your business's future, no matter what industry you're in, depends on you reducing emissions. And the largest economic opportunities for industries, governments and countries are in the decarbonisation of the world over the next 20 years. If you're not invested or proactive in decarbonising the entire world, you're probably not as a business leader taking advantage of the best opportunities in front of you. And the cost of acting now is a lot less than the cost of acting in the future.